Hey everybody, welcome to another video. I've been thinking recently a lot about heraldry and what it might look like on Space Marines. There are a few reasons for this, and the main one, honestly, has got to be a lot of the press on the Warhammer community website about Bretonians lately. For those who don't know, Bretonians are questing knights from Warhammer Fantasy Battle that are going to be brought back into the Old World game that they're currently working on. Historically, they're full of bright colours, and every model is unique in what heraldry and designs that they wear. Further to this, I'm also a massive history buff. I love learning about different periods in time, and recently I've been on a bit of a medieval kick. If you want a good book to read about the Middle Ages, I highly recommend Powers and Thrones by Dan Jones, by the way. Excellent, excellent book. That aside, in the past, I've also heard the phrase used that a marine, in this case a space marine, doesn't need to carry a banner, even though some do, because he wears his colours on his armour. He is his own banner. And that spoke to me. Now, naturally, we have many chapters wearing bright colours, think imperial fists and salamanders, white scars even. They're wearing bright heraldry onto the battlefield, but... I really wanted to lean more into the personal heraldry that tells a little bit of a story about each individual marine. This is naturally going to be a very time consuming process, so I can't really recommend it for an entire army, but I'm definitely going to give it a go. For those who don't know, what I'm painting today is an aggressor, which is a large, chunky, first into the breach kind of guy with twin gauntlets on his hands and rocket launchers on his back, and you know, some big meaty power fists for punching down walls and uh, people. And as I've been talking, I've been base coating him in the colours of my own personal chapter, the Voidwalkers, which is a mix of blue, silver and purple. I'm not really going to go into what I'm doing here with the standard base coating and shading and highlighting. In fact, in a minute we're going to skip ahead to the part where he's basically completely done and we can get into some lovely, exciting, but also rather time consuming, freehand. Once I'd completed all the initial painting, I was left with something like this. This is where I'd probably be happy to leave most models, at least until I've put the transfers on and based them, so it's in a good position for us to start experimenting. The first bit of personal heraldry I'm going to go into is actually something that unifies him with the rest of his brothers. This is an aggressor sergeant, so I wanted to mark that out. He has the little skull on his helmet, but I wanted something brighter and... I don't do the whole codex compliant thing with these guys and paint their entire helmets red, but I thought a cool red stripe right down the centre would be striking. And it is, it works on all my other sergeants and it means that I as the player can also see who's who very easily. My advice for any freehand, even that as simple as this, is the same as when you're base coating. Keep your paint thin, keep your layers thin and take your time. I'm using a fairly sharp brush here, but it's nothing expensive or exciting. It's just something I picked up in a pack at Hobbycraft. It might not last forever, but it works for a few models and that's good enough for me at this stage. With the red stripe done, I wanted to stay in the same vein and use some more red, this time doing some checkers. Routinely, you see the Ultramarines wearing checkered armor around their knee pads and sometimes on the little shields by their hips. And I wanted to keep that going because these guys are, at least in my lore, considered to be descended from Gilliman. I only wanted to paint checkers on half of the knee pad, so I initially started by dividing the knee pad into two using my red paint. I then did a series of cross hatched lines straight down and straight across on the vertical and horizontals, which created my squares, and then I filled in every other square with the same paint. This technique can also work for diamonds, so it is great for using on harlequins if you want to do it freehand. Now at these early stages of freehand, you might start thinking, oh, this is a little bit messy and looks a little bit muddy, perhaps, because we're using quite dark colours. But when we go in with the highlights, you'll see it looks a lot better. Another accent colour I use fairly sparingly on my Void Walkers is Incubi Darkness, which is a really nice deep sea green. I decided to quarter up the knee pad and use it just as the bottom left or bottom right, depending on where you're looking at it, just to add a little bit of difference and a little bit more colour. This could be his personal heraldry or anything really, you can attach a story to any little bit that you add. And then to make sure that it was absolutely clear there was a change in colour because they're both dark colours, I highlighted up in between so there was absolutely no doubt that we were changing from purple to green. Plus it added a really nice sharp clean effect. In the final quadrant, the purple area, I decided to add a little V, just for void walkers or perhaps it says five in Roman numerals. 
I never really decided, but I thought it was a good look and adds a little bit more detail with no real effort. That's our first knee pad done, showing off a cool quarter effect. So we're gonna move on to the other knee pad. This one's much simpler. I'm going to do a simple yellow stripe right down the center. Now the main reason I'm adding this yellow stripe is because it looks cool, but by attaching some lore to it, we add some significance on the tabletop. In this case, the yellow stripe is a campaign indicator to say that he fought on his home world of Tyrannus. Their homeworld, Tyrannus, was directly underneath the Great Rift when it ripped across the galaxy, so naturally, lots of demons appeared. What we can now tell from the heraldry is that he's a veteran, part of the Indomitus Crusade that went to relieve the planet, he's fought on the planet against demons, and he's a sergeant, so he's doing pretty well. On this left-hand leg plate, or right hand as we look at him, I decided to halve it into purple and blue, and then I added this nice yellow cross onto the blue area because I thought it looked cool. And as I was painting it, I realized it looks just like the Swedish flag. So I guess, Squidmar, this is for you. We'll come back to tidying up the flag later as yellow over blue requires many coats and we still need to shade and highlight it to make sure it ties in with all the highlighting we've already done. But the main point here is that real life flags are also an excellent source of inspiration. I'm not saying go out and start painting every flag. I mean, the Union flag from the UK is gonna be a bit much but there's absolutely nothing wrong with being inspired by real life examples. A few seconds ago, I spoke about shading the yellow. It's really easy to do with contrast paint, and in yellow in this case. I just thinned it down and glazed it into the lower areas. It creates a bit of an orange tinge and adds a load of depth with very little effort. Nice quick hack here. With the two knee pads and that hip plate now done, we're gonna move on to the left shoulder pad where the chapter badge sits. Normally the chapter emblem is a purple lightning bolt on a blue field with a few flashes of lightning in the background, but this time I wanted to make it slightly different and really show the personal heraldry of this guy. So once again, showing those Ultramarines Gilliman style roots, I added some white checkers. As always when painting white start with the grey, then you have somewhere to go for highlights and also when you add shading it's not going to be such a massive difference. I decided pretty early on that I wanted this shoulder pad to be split into thirds, so essentially the top half is going to be that lightning bolt and the lower part is split into two, one with checkers and one with a cool little flag motif. Now the checkers might be an homage to the Ultramarines and his gene father, but I don't really know what this red cross with some yellow that I ended up adding really is, but I don't need to know, it's his story and it looks cool. We can attach meaning to it later if we want, or we can just accept that it's a cool little look. Above that area I started adding the purple lightning bolt, but quite quickly decided I didn't really like where it was, so I thought I'd come back to it in a second. I'm using my highlight layers here to further differentiate between the bottom half of the shoulder pad and the top half, where the blue ends and the white begins. The joy with doing freehand heraldry like this is that it doesn't really need to be perfect, for all I know, this has been painted on by hand by the Marine who's wearing the armor. So it's absolutely fine if there are tiny little imperfections because it might be that on such a large scale, he has left a few nicks and scratches here and there. With those main details complete, I went back in and fixed the lightning bolt. So it was more central and larger and more prominent on the shoulder pad. After that, I highlighted everything up, which really made it pop and look bright. For the gauntlets, I wanted to add something a little bit more aggressive looking, so I decided to make these little red triangles, which look a little bit like teeth. Initially, I only did it on this right hand gauntlet and only did it on the lower part, but as you'll see in a bit, I went back and did it on the upper and on the other gauntlet too. Geometric shapes like squares and triangles and stripes are an excellent way to give that medieval look because they were commonly used on heraldry back in the day. Leaving the gauntlets alone for a second, I added yet another more practical piece of heraldry. In this case, his designation that he's heavy support, which is an upside down V. I could have very easily used a transfer here and there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing that, but I wanted to paint over and perhaps around this. So I decided the best option for a smooth surface was to simply paint it on with freehand. Luckily, this is a really simple shape. Most of the marine shapes are. So if you haven't done it before, give it a go. To tie in with a few other parts of the armor, I wanted to add yet another yellow cross. This time though on a slight angle, so it looks more like an X rather than a standard horizontal cross. 
In hindsight, I should have painted this on first and then added the fire support marking, but it was an iterative process. I was coming up with this as I went and decided that the cross would look cool. Again, as I always say in these videos, there's nothing wrong with going back and forth on your projects. And in this case, as the lines were already there, I was able to just join them up and actually tidy it up a tad. So it ended up looking better than it did previously. That's a win. At this point, I started looking at the model and wondering what else there was that I could actually add. And there was still a fair amount of real estate, but I decided for this specific Marine, less is more. It's my first go and I don't want to overload it. Plus you've got to leave something for the lieutenants and the captains. So all I did, as mentioned earlier, was add some more of those triangles to his gauntlets, which gave a nice symmetrical effect. I then also added a few lightning bolts between these triangles, as the Voidwalkers have a lot of lightning motifs on them. I mean, not specifically on this guy, but the rest of the force does. Lightning bolts are fairly easy to do. I do recommend getting up a reference image if you haven't done them before, but generally I start with a darker blue, and then Fenrisian grey, which is like a blue-grey, and then finally some pale grey-blue, which is like Celestra grey, but better in every way. This gives a cool, easy glow effect and makes the lightning look real and yet painted on at the same time. The final bit of heraldry I added were these stripes over his eyes. For the Void Walkers, these are honour markings. Maybe he slain an enemy champion or held the breach to the last. That kind of thing. The final stages weren't anything to do with heraldry, but just adding a bit of battle damage here and there. The point of this video wasn't any kind of cohesive guide on exactly how to do heraldry or freehand, but hopefully gave a bit of inspiration on what you can do to make every marine special if you're so inclined. I'm definitely going to be doing more of this because it was great fun. I've been Sam, see you next time.